Now, a lot of big-name quarterbacks in the NFC, so Acho, which one is under the most pressure? To me, it's very, very simple. It's Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Then you look at it and you say, Drew Brees, 40 years old. You only have so many years left. We're watching it play out in front of our eyes with Tom Brady. The decline can be quick and the decline can be steep. Drew Brees and these Saints, they have been knocking on the door of the Super Bowl for years. Last year, they more than likely would have got there if not for the refs. So it's really... It's up to Drew Brees, and it's up to Drew Brees right now. It's not a matter of, oh, can the Saints hold on for next year or the year after that? When I look at some of the other quarterbacks that are in the NFC, Garoppolo, he's young. Wentz, there, nobody expecting anything from the Eagles. Russell Wilson, <laughs> eh, he's young as well. He's maybe 30, 31. We came in the draft together. So it's Drew Brees, and it's far and away Drew Brees. Well, see, I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers. And the reason I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers is because I'm going from a legacy perspective with Aaron Rodgers. When we talk about Aaron Rodgers, most people talk about the most gifted passer we have seen play the quarterback yeah. position with Aaron Rodgers. Okay, when, and when you hold when you hold someone to that type of that high of a standard, and to this point, he only has one Super Bowl in 2011. I mean, how many times have we seen Aaron Rodgers <clears throat> with team after team after team, right. which we we have seen him basically put t put the Green Bay Packers on his back year after right. year to come up short. Now, this year is different because Aaron Rodgers is not playing like Aaron Rodgers. So, oh, mm -hmm. And Aaron Rodgers, actually, it's not even the MVP of the offense. It's Aaron Jones. Right. And I think Aaron Rodgers is at a critical juncture in his career right now where things are starting to trend downward. Yeah. Actually, it's been starting to trend downward yeah, for, for a couple years, years now. Years now yeah. So I think just from a legacy perspective for Aaron Rodgers, I think this is hugely uh, critical because they, he does have a buy and, and home field advantage. Well, he needs so, another Super Bowl win to cement right. his legacy. I think so. I'm going I'm to tell you why you're right in a second. But I do think that it's important to think about, you didn't mention also the, Min the Minneapolis or the Minnesota Miracle. That, that was crushing. Mm -hmm. And the Saints, you can't expect to keep getting back here. I think what they have done is remarkable. Like, the, Sean Payton, he gets a lot of credit for uh, coaching the team as, from a schematic standpoint. But the psychological impact of coming back from the Minneapolis miracle to having another season where they're knocking on the door of the Super Bowl and then to, frankly, have another debilitating kind of unfair, frankly, loss with the refs not calling that penalty to keep them out of it again, and then to come back this year and to be a contender again, like, that's not going to continue to happen. So he is certainly under a lot of pressure, and at 40, we can't expect him to, to, to be there forever. Uh, yep. However, the thing, we talked about Coughlin earlier, about how they took Tom Coughlin out and left everybody else. That's an indictment on Tom Coughlin. They did the opposite in, in Green Bay. They got rid of the coach because the coach was the problem. They got a pretty solid offensive new line. General, yeah. New general manager. They got it rid of the GM because presumably he was part of the problem. They got him a pretty, pretty good, a great offensive line. They, got, they went out and spent money in free agency to build up that defense. Elite and that, defense. Yeah, that defense creates so many turnovers. They haven't been, like, shutting people down necessarily, but they create turnovers and give them the ball. They have uh, Devontae Adams, a real number one receiver. They went and got him a tight end. Jimmy Graham is not the Jimmy Graham that he was, but he's still an effective receiver and they went and got him a running game so all the years we've been saying that it's sad that Mike McCarthy has been ruining Aaron Rodgers career Mike McCarthy's <laughs> the problem Aaron Rodgers should be great they went and got a new offensive minded head coach and Aaron Rodgers numbers are pretty much the same as they were under Mike McCarthy and now the question is if we improve everything around you are you going to get us to that point like I think this becomes uh, not only not winning a Super Bowl but it becomes a black mark on his legacy because we all then question, like, was it Mike McCarthy's fault all the time? I think that would be unfair. But once we get further away from this, we won't have the context to look at all this. We're just going to see. Remember that time when they tried to build up around Aaron Rodgers and he failed? Yeah, I, I think, though, in hindsight, when you look at it, if you say, man, the Packers under a first-year head coach didn't win a Super Bowl, I don't know that you can really mur kill that team, so to speak, for that. But when you look at... A lot of people are putting a lot of pressure on Matt LaFleur, though. They are. But I just don't know that you can ever expect a first-year head coach to come in and win a Super Bowl, regardless who's in at quarterback. There's a learning curve. There's an adjusting period. When I look at Drew Brees, we stopped the world. I think it was Monday Night Football when he <laughs> broke Peyton Manning's yeah, passing yeah. record. Yeah. You know, we cut to his kids, the smiling beauty. Beautiful family, <laughs> cut to the wife, tears That's flowing like down the people's faces. Time in two years, you know yeah. what I mean? We, like, we stopped we, everything. We stopped everything. The law, Drew Brees, Drew Brees, he's been to 13 Pro Bowls. We acclaim him as one of the best to ever do it. And we acclaim his head coach, who's actually proven is one of the best to ever do it. So I just don't want to look back at Drew Brees' career, because mind you, Brees, Rodgers, Russell Wilson, they all have one Super Bowl. They're all vying for that next one. I just don't want to look back at Drew Brees' career and say, man, 
we stop Monday Night Football every week for you to celebrate but you know, something, but not that ring. But, right. you know, that, again, I go back to the perception of Aaron Rodgers because so long we've been talking about, you know, Aaron Rodgers, the most gifted passer that we've ever seen. Aaron Rodgers being held back by Mike McCarthy. Aaron Rodgers being held back by the GM because the GM doesn't want to spend right. money in, in, free, agency, in right. free agency. Well, guess what? They changed the coach. Yep. They, they changed the GM. Mm-hmm. They changed all of that. Mm-hmm. So it's like there is absolutely no yeah. excuses for Aaron Rodgers moving forward. All, if he doesn't get it done yeah. now. Yeah, all that stuff is true. And I'm going to tell you another reason why you're wrong. Because the story, we, when we get further away from this stuff and we go through Hall of Fame stuff, both of these guys are going to go through the Hall of Fame. We will cook up a story around them for us to remember him by. The story around Drew Brees is set. He doesn't need another Super Bowl. The story is he saved New Orleans. Orleans, Right. Drew Brees was thrown away by the Chargers, and then he went and saved New Orleans after Katrina, won a Super Bowl, and Drew Brees' name is going to be at the top of all the most significant passing marks. He might be number one in them, and when it's said and done. So I don't think that this Super Bowl has the same impact. I think winning a second Super Bowl has some impact on Drew Brees. But Drew Brees is already, he's already written that beautiful story for us to tell during his Hall of Fame speech. Aaron Rodgers is a little different. I think the story of Drew Brees will be he saved New Orleans, but if Aaron Rodgers doesn't win another Super Bowl, the story of Aaron Rodgers will be a career underachiever, and we'll be too far away to blame Damn. it on other people. It'll be like, he was great, he won a Super Bowl, he may be the greatest we've ever seen. It'll be more like Dan Marino. That'll be the story, whereas I don't think that's the case for Drew Well, Rodgers. I'll say Nika on this case. I don't think Nika's wrong. Because as I look at it... That means I'm right. (laughs) Let's get that clear. Double (laughs) negative. I tried to go over the head with it. Um, What I will say is, you can't speak as as Rodgers is better than Breeze. I think, because I hear some of that in your tone, is like, (laughs) Breeze is a better quarterback than Rodgers now if we really want to look at the numbers. Now, Rodgers, I think his ceiling was higher, but Breeze, as far as level of play and consistency, it's been higher. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.